In today's lecture, we're going to discuss the theology of the German theologian, Albrecht Ritschel. Now, Ritschel brought together Schlamacher's Christocentrism and Kant's conviction that religion is ethics, not metaphysics. Now, Ritschel used Kant's philosophy to restate the message of Christianity. Now, notice that key theme, what Ritschel's doing. He's restating the the, he's restating Christian theology to address these issues in the modern context. Now, for Ritual, Christianity boils down to the kingdom of God, which can be summed up as ethical living. We're going to discuss these four aspects today of Ritual's thought. First, his idea of religion and value judgment. Second, this concept of the kingdom of God. Third, his theological method. And finally, we're going to talk about this idea of sin and salvation. Let's start with uh, Ritchell's idea of religion and value judgments. So in the 19th century, the fields of science and history and philosophy seem to con conflict with theology and faith. Ritchell tries to overcome this problem by distinguishing between two forms of knowledge, scientific and religious. Now, this idea is a variation of Kant's understanding of how the mind forms knowledge. It also represents a similar impulse as Schlamacher. Now, of course, Schlamacher uh, had to try to address a culture which saw science uh, as competing with religion. Ritual's picking up sort of the same motivation. Now, for Ritual, both fields of science and religion, they concern the same object. Okay, So the, the object of the knowledge is not different. The object is reality. Now, But they differ in, their, in terms of how they approach this object. Scientific knowledge concerns the neutral, the objective, how things are. The mind interprets reality in terms of causal relationships and objective facts. But for Ritchell, there's this other way that the mind also receives input. This is the realm of value judgments. The mind interprets reality in terms of their worth or value. Think in terms of how, how things affect us, in terms of pleasure or in terms of Pain. This is the realm of religious knowledge. So religious knowledge concerns morality and ethics. It concerns how things ought to be. And primarily religious knowledge tells us our value judgments. Uh, Roger Olson explains it this way. Religious knowledge interprets reality in terms of the value things have for the knower's ultimate fulfillment and moral well-being. Religious knowledge has to do with the value of things for achieving people's highest good. Let's use the example of Jesus' life and ministry to illustrate this distinction between scientific and religious knowledge. So scientific knowledge approaches Jesus from a perspective that emphasizes observations and empirical evidence. A scientific approach to Jesus would try to understand the historical context, social context, and, and how to verify the events surrounding Jesus' life. A scientific approach would use critical and historical methods in order to gain these insights into the life and ministry of Jesus. How does this compare with religious knowledge? Well, religious knowledge takes a distinct approach by looking into the realm of value judgments. This is a key term. It, religious knowledge would seek to understand Jesus not merely as this historical figure, but as the embodiment of divine love and the pinnacle of moral and ethical values. See, religious knowledge encompasses beliefs about Jesus' divine nature, his teachings on compassion and forgiveness and love, and the transformative power of his redemption. But it does so in a particular way. It interprets the significance of Jesus in terms of the ultimate value he gives to us in our human fl flourishing and in our moral well-being. Now notice, uh, the single object, Jesus' life and his ministry, can be viewed or interpreted from either a scientific or religious perspective. Now religious knowledge transcends. It goes beyond the realm of facts. And it ventures into the realm of value judgments, of ethics. In this domain, the evaluation of Jesus' teachings is not solely based on historical accuracy or empirical evidence. That's key. But what it does do is it looks at the value and worth of Jesus for moral fulfillment. Now, by placing religion in the realm 
of practical reason. Ritual essentially overcomes this problem of scientific positivism, this idea that only science can give us true knowledge. Ritual is carving out a space for religion and faith in a context which has really pushed it out. Religious knowledge for, for ritual determines what has value. Religion tells us what is good. What is good is the kingdom of God. So what ritual says, the good in the Christian sense is the kingdom of God. In other words, the uninterrupted reciprocation of action springing from the motive of love, a kingdom in which all are knit together in union with everyone who can show the marks of a neighbor. Further, it is that union of men in which all goods are appropriated in their proper subordination to the highest good. See, the central theme of ritual theology is the kingdom of God. He says this, he says, Jesus himself saw in the kingdom of God the moral end of the religious fellowship he had to found. Jesus understood by it not the common exercise of worship, but the organization of humanity through action inspired by love. Notice the focus on morality and ethical living. For ritual, we know God insofar as we know God's worth or value to us. And God's value is ultimately ultimately revealed in the person of Jesus. So to be a Christian is to be, is to be one who gives yourself wholly to the love of neighbor. What about Ritual's theological method? Ritual agrees with Schlamacher that religion is at its core experiential, but he actually differs from Schlamacher on the nature of religious experience. Ritual viewed Schleimacher's focus on the feeling on this feeling of absolute dependence as too subjective. For Ritual, the content of theology is historical. It's found not in the inner self-consciousness, but in the historical revelation of Jesus Christ. For Ritual, Schleimacher's view lacked Christian content. It lacked this focus on Jesus Christ. Notice how Ritual describes the task of theology. He says, The theologian's task is simply to explicate the meaning of the content of God's self-revelation as historically given in the person of Jesus Christ. Theology was a historical study of the collective religious and moral experience of the kingdom of God by Christians in the church. It doesn't proceed, like Schleimacher argues, as sort of this inner self-analysis. No, for, for Ritual, we can know the truth, well, the value of Christianity by looking at the collective experience of Jesus' value for the early church. This is what we analyze, the church's experience of the kingdom of God. The church truly does experience spiritual freedom through Jesus Christ. The historian, then, the, the theologian, analyzes these early Christian experiences in order to offer an account of Jesus and the kingdom. So this is the end of the theological task. So by studying the church, uh, theology can offer a coherent set of moral guidelines. Remember the focus of theology, ethical living. But differing from Schleimacher, this experience of the early church is not this, it's not a mere sort of inner moral feeling of absolute dependence but it's the existential experience of freedom that is given through faith in Jesus. Now, it's a focus here on Jesus Christ and the freedom that he gives. How can we sum up Ritual's view of sin and salvation? Well, for Ritual, every human being grapples with a fundamental inner conflict. There's an inner conflict in every single person. It's a self-contradiction that arises from these limitations that they just feel. They see their limitations in reaching towards the good, in reaching towards this ultimate spiritual end. Humans experience bondage to the forces of nature. This, these forces of nature, they restrict our capacity to fully embody the good. Now, in Ritual's framework, this limitation, this lack, is sin. Sin is not merely sort of a series of moral transgressions, but it's, it's primarily this existential condition that characterizes every single human. All right, what about salvation? Well, salvation is the freedom found in liberating grace. Through the liberating grace of Jesus Christ, we receive 
freedom from the state of limitation, from this bondage to the forces of nature. We experience God personally and existentially. And this experience draws us out of our limitation, our helplessness, our bondage to, again, this self-contradiction that's inside of each person. Well, Ritchell was arguably the most influential theologian of the late 19th century. He tried to reconcile faith and science by focusing and reducing Christianity to the ethical. Ritchell restated the Christian faith in terms of the kingdom of God. Ritchell's theology was greatly influential among liberal theology, among those theologians who saw it, again, to, to restate the Christian faith in light of modernity and its social consciousness. Many after him, uh, sometimes called the, uh, the Ritual School of Theology, they took up this call to refocus on lived theology. In particular, Ritual influences uh, von Harnack in Germany. 